Hello friend! Welcome to Zuzukorn's spoiler-free beginner progression guide for Terraria 1.4, filled with fun for both new players and veterans alike. This video will give you a general idea of what to do and how to beat Terraria, but made intentionally vague so that you can have the full vanilla experience on your own. Any spoilers here are kept to a bare minimum. For all you veterans out there, test yourself. See if you can guess what exactly I'm referring to in this guide. If you can't, then maybe you're not a real veteran. I've made a number of guides on how to progress and beat Terraria in the past, and I used to cover exactly what to do and what weapons to use against each boss for the easiest time, but I still occasionally get complaints from ungrateful purists who get angry at me for spoiling the game, even though they were the ones who stupidly clicked on a video that says all of Terraria in 8 minutes. So here I am throwing out a guide with minimal spoilers, only pointing you generally in the right direction. So if you're a new beginner, I hope this video will help you get the full experience. And if you're a Terraria veteran, let's see if you truly deserve that title. So let's begin. Stage 1 World Creation Welcome to the wonderful world of Terraria. You've launched your game and now you want to play. What do you do? First of all, you create a character. For a proper vanilla experience, I recommend making a softcore character. Make sure you don't make a journey one, because those can only go into special creative mode worlds. Don't bother picking medium core because that's just a horrible experience and no one ever plays that. And don't click hardcore unless you're really ready for the challenge. Once you've made your softcore character, give it a name and then create a world. I recommend either a small or medium world for your first experience, a large world is filled with lots of resources, but it might get too tiring to travel great distances all the time. There's also plenty of loot in a small world, so you're really not losing out on much. As for the world evil, it doesn't matter. Corruption and Crimson have different loot drops, but they don't affect progression that much, so I'd just leave it up to fate. However, Corruption is usually considered slightly easier, just ever so slightly, so pick that if you're really really concerned. Most importantly, make sure that your world is a normal world. Expert and above worlds are really quite difficult for a complete fresh beginner, and journey worlds are basically creative boat with a twist. So in summary, just make a softcore character, then make a small and medium normal world. Stage 2, the early game. Welcome to the actual world of Terraria, my friend. You're ready for a fun journey ahead. If you notice, you have a strange looking man here. This is the guide NPC, and he drops hints on what to do next if you click the help button. More importantly, using this crafting button, you can put almost anything you find in this box here, and he will tell you every single recipe that uses that item. He even tells you what crafting station you need. If you're in for a full on vanilla experience, just ignore the wiki, and then throw everything you can into this box to discover what items are available in the game. I won't cover all the NPCs and what they do, so go talk to them if a new one comes in. So what's there to do in this game? To finally start your journey proper, cut down trees and build a house. Enemies will spawn once night falls, and without shelter you might get mangled into a mess. At the same time, having more houses will allow other NPCs to move in too. I won't tell you exactly what you need for a house, for it to be considered valid, but note that when you open your inventory, clicking this house icon on the right side opens a sub-menu. Clicking on the question mark, then clicking on your house, will tell you if it's valid housing, or what else you will need. And just an FYI, walls don't only refer to the blocks you use to build the house, but it's also something you craft and place down in the background. Also, to begin with crafting, just make a workbench with some wood, then explore from there. Next, explore the world and discover new biomes. Plunder chests and tackle the enemies you see. You can find valuable loot almost everywhere. By the way, some items you find are accessories which can be equipped. These will give you a special effect depending on what accessory it is. For example, some items let you climb walls, while others let you run faster. I also recommend looking for some gems. These can be crafted into a special tool that enables you to do things like this, which will help a lot during your journey. I'm sure the veterans know what I'm talking about. If you don't, then you're not a veteran. Or maybe I'm just bad at explaining. Ha ha ha. 
Once you think that you're kind of geared up, give the very first boss a try. The two earliest bosses have a chance of spawning randomly, one from completing an event where enemies fall from the sky, and one just randomly at night. Look out for special coloured messages to see what's happening in the world. If you've seen some of these bosses but are having a hard time, try using a bow and arrow. Normal wooden arrows can be made into special arrows that deal more damage and inflict stasis effects on the enemy. If you're wondering what arrows are great, maybe journey into the frozen wasteland of the ice biome. Hint hint. Stage 3. The not so early game. Welcome back. I see that you've maybe tried to tackle these super early bosses, maybe with varying degrees of success. If you had failed, no worries, because you can craft things to summon them again using materials that are instinctively related to the boss. Just as an example, if the boss is something like a bee, you can most probably craft its summoning totem using honey. So, you know, if the boss happens to be a flying, I don't know, an eyeball or something, maybe you can make the summoning totem using loot from smaller flying eyeballs. Just the general rule for ya. Also, remember to put whatever you find into the guide's crafting function to see what new gear you can make. The next thing to do is journey into the corruption or crimson. This biome is fraught with danger, but filled with glorious loot. Where is the loot though? Hmm, those glowy things in the wall seem kind of suspect. Strangely, we can't seem to mine our way there. Maybe there is some way to purify the corrupted dirt here? Or better yet, just blow it up or something. Just be careful though, because breaking too many of these will invite the wrath of the biome boss. You will need to kill the boss eventually, so make sure you prepare well. I'm sure that the loot from the orbs will help you out. Once you've geared up a little more, you can try entering the dungeon if you find it. However, it is heavily guarded until you defeat its protector. It might have something to do with this old guy here, maybe at night or something. Once you've gained access to the dungeon, there is some nice loot that can be found in these locked chests, but if you're wondering where to get a key from, they drop from enemies in the dungeon. At this point in time, I would encourage you to explore the world, and maybe build an arena, or set up your pylon network for convenience. What are pylons, you might ask? Well, if you build little towns in different biomes, NPCs may sell you this thing called a pylon, which you can use to teleport to other pylons. However, certain conditions have to be met before NPCs will sell you one, so make sure to check if they're happy with the biome they're in, and whether they like their roommates or not. The jungle also has some pretty cool loot, and even a boss that can drop some useful weapons going forward. Strictly speaking though, this boss is optional, so you don't really have to go after it if you don't want to. Similarly, there are a few events and invasions that can bring in new NPCs or weapons, some of which are pretty important, but I'll leave that for you to discover on your own. For the veterans out there, you do know which NPC I'm talking about, right? You know, bald, green, a scammer. Stage 4, Late Pre-Hard Mode At this point, you might feel like you can pretty much kill everything rather comfortably, which is a good thing. It's about time to venture downwards into the center of the world. Keep digging and you find yourself in the underworld. It's awfully hot in here, isn't it? These shadow chests contain rare loot as well, but you'll need a shadow key. Those can be found somewhere in the dungeon. Luckily, all you need is a single shadow key to open all the shadow chests in the world. Anyway, we're on a mission. We need to find some way to free the spirits of light and dark. But before that, notice that there is some shiny new ore down here. This is the strongest ore that we can get right now. The only problem here is, it's in lava. And we can't really swim in lava. Or can we? Maybe there is some way to give ourselves a buff to make us immune to lava and burns. Hmm, obsidian is pretty heat resistant, so maybe we can make something out of that. When in doubt, always check recipes with the guide NPC. While you're mining your hellstone ore, make sure to grab one of these oven looking things. These are hell forges, and you'll need them to smelt the ore. But if you don't see the bars appearing, make sure you have everything you need to craft a bar. Check with the guide to see if you're missing anything. So, 
Once you're fully decked out, let's try to fight the Underworld boss. How to summon it is honestly not that instinctive, but chances are if you kill enough voodoo demons, you're bound to summon it by accident anyway. But just a tip here, make sure that you always have your guide NPC alive, because without him, the boss just won't spawn. So if you realize that he isn't moving in for some reason, go and make more houses. I would also recommend making a long row of platforms for this boss specifically. You just can't freely move left and right for it, so just be prepared. Stage 5 Why is everything so hard all of a sudden? Congratulations, you've defeated the Underworld boss, and now the ancient spirits of light and dark have been released. The good news is, you can now find new enemies, new bosses, and new loot. The not so good news is, everything is now way more difficult. Your weapons that were previously destroying everything, well, they're pretty much useless now against your new threats. The bad news is, your biome towns might be ruined now. There are some ways to purify it, but for now, you just have to stick with it. To get your very first upgrade here, use the hammer that was dropped from the Underworld boss. With this, you can break altars in the Crimson or Corruption. This spawns in new ores that you can mine to get newly upgraded weapons. Each altar broken will spawn one of three different ores, which go in a rotation. So for example, the first one you break will give you tier 1 ore, the second tier 2, the third tier 3, and then the fourth tier 1 again, and then the cycle repeats. You can't just skip to tier 3 immediately, so you're going to have to make tier 1 pickaxes, then mine tier 2 ore, make tier 2 pickaxes, then mine tier 3 ore. Also, remember to put the ores and bars into the guides function. You might need some new crafting stations. Also, note that from now on, many armor sets will have multiple helmet options. These make the armor that you make buff different types of damage. For example, the melee headpiece may buff melee speed and melee damage, while the mage one may give you more mana and buff magic damage. So just make the one for the weapon type that you like the most. With your new stronger weapons, I would recommend visiting some areas in the sky. In those sky areas, a very strong and long new enemy spawns once in a while. Killing a few of those will net you almost enough crafting materials to make a pair of wings. Just look at these. Wings will allow you to, well, fly obviously. You're going to need these from now on, because bosses now have so much mobility, so you've got to keep up too somehow. Go explore the biomes that you've visited before. New weapons can drop from new enemies, and these may be way stronger than what you have. There are just too many new things to mention, so I'll just leave the joys of serendipity to you. Now back to progression. At night, one of three possible bosses may appear, depending on which message shows up. These are definitely not pushovers, and you have to defeat all three before we can continue on with world progression. Most people get stuck here for the longest time during their playthrough, so don't be discouraged. If you want to manually summon them, the only hint that I'll give you is to put iron bars or lead bars into the guide's crafting function. A lot of things will appear, but there will be three items in there that are used to summon each of the bosses. If you're really really stuck here, check out my other videos or my boss breakdown YouTube shorts for some help. Make sure that your accessories and all are up to date too. There is also a way to merge some accessories together, so maybe go look into that to save some accessory slots. And don't forget to make awesome new armors when you finally defeat them. Stage 6 I think I've got everything under control now. Yes, I'm sure you do. After all, you've defeated the three bosses that most people get stuck on. If you notice, when you defeat the third and final one, the message, The Jungle Grows Restless, pops out. That's clearly a hint to go back into the jungle. There are now two new, big threats that are accessible in there. There is also a nice green ore for you to mine. You will need a pickaxe that uses loot from each of the three bosses. However, I don't recommend that you make a whole set of this new green armor. It provides very minimal upgrades compared to what you'd already have at this point. Instead, hold on to the green ore for now. They can be upgraded later to make armor that offers way more substantial upgrades. Anyway, look around for new things. This seems awfully suspect. I'm sure it wasn't here before. 
You could break it with a pickaxe, but just be ready for the consequences. And by consequences, I mean a boss. For this boss, you're going to need space. A lot of it. So don't say I didn't warn you. Unfortunately, this boss doesn't have a summoning totem, so if you die, you're going to have to find another one of these and make more space around there. If you try to lead the boss to an open area, but do it too fast, it might just despawn. Annoying, but just take note of that. Once you've defeated the jungle boss, screams will be heard echoing in the dungeon. If you return there, tons of new enemies and new loot drops will be available, so go check that out if you want. You can also summon some new invasions and events with the stuff from there. Some of the loot drops from the dungeon and the invasions are actually pretty amazing. What is necessary though is for you to journey into the jungle temple. You're going to need a temple key that's dropped from the previous boss. Here, the temple is filled with enemies and traps. These traps are not the simple dart traps that you've randomly stumbled across, but instead are highly sophisticated ancient traps of doom. In other words, they hurt. A lot. You're probably going to die to the traps way more times than to the enemies. Make sure you loot the temple chests, since those have the summoning totem for the temple boss. You might come across some solar tablets too, which summons yet another invasion. By the way, all these new invasions that I've mentioned are decently challenging, so they are really not pushovers. Unlike this temple boss. Okay, to be fair, he does pack quite a punch. But I think with the normal world settings that we set up, he's not too bad. So make sure you check what you can make with his loot drops. Stage 7, the final frontier. With the temple boss defeated, you're actually pretty close to finishing the game. One last invasion can spawn now, which gives you interesting otherworldly drops. There's even a mount that can fly forever. To progress once again, head over to the dungeon. You realize that there are a new bunch of happy friends. Just look at them, they absolutely adore me. Pray harder. I won't tell you what you need to do here to summon the boss, but your initial instinct will probably be right. Be ready for a decently simple fight, if you had your stuff upgraded of course. If you took a detour to grab the flying mount, that will help a lot here. Once you've defeated this boss, the world will plunge into celestial doom. Four space pillars will spawn around the map, and you'll need to fight them. You can't damage them directly from the get-go though, so you have to call their minions to deplete the shield. Once you've defeated one, I would recommend making the all-new lunar weapons using their loot drops. Those are seriously pretty busted. Using them will make you realize that you're at the end game now. A word of caution here though, you might want to prepare all your potions and buffs before you take down the last pillar. Defeating all four pillars will summon the final Terraria boss in one minute. Rather than panicking and scrambling for your items, just have some foresight and build whatever you need beforehand. The final boss will be a challenge for many people, and chances are you're not going to succeed on your first try. To summon him again, you're going to have to do everything in stage 7 again. But the good news is, you can also use some of each fragment to make his summoning totem. So just keep at it. Once you've defeated the final boss, congratulations, you have beaten Terraria. You are no longer a fresh beginner, but a semi-Terraria veteran. So, what next? Stage 8. You mean, it's over? Well, not quite. Even on your normal world, you can still go and check out all the things that you've missed out on. Biome loot, optional bosses, all that good stuff. There is also a really, really, really strong weapon that represents the peak of your entire Terraria journey. And here's a hint, you're going to need 10 different swords obtained at multiple points of your journey to craft it. That in itself is quite the challenge. But if you're hungry for more, why not try out an expert mode world instead? These have higher loot drop rates, new expert exclusive accessories, and they offer a whole new challenge. Every single boss will come with increased health and new mechanics, and enemies will be buffed by a substantial amount. Trust me, this will feel like a completely different game. All those bad habits and brute force methods that you had used, they are probably not going to work anymore. So you have to rethink and tackle the problem from a new perspective. You can also try limiting yourself to a certain weapon type, 
which is what people refer to as class playthroughs. So for example, if you want to play as a mage, you only use magic weapons for the entire playthrough. And if you're still hungry after that, why not explore into modded terraria? These offer even more bosses, new biome loot, and new classes even. The possibilities are endless. Or maybe you just want to fool around in the game like I did, and mine out the entire world just to find out how much it's worth. You can do that too. The world of Terraria is yours to explore. Or destroy. So go out there and do whatever you want. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe to join the Zuzu Corn family. Check out my socials if you want to, and watch my other videos too. Have a nice day, and have a great week ahead. Bye bye.